Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, this is a very controversial subject, as you guys are already fully aware. Uh, and I have tried to be more on the side of sharing information over on our Patreon channel when it comes to these controversial subjects uh, about Planet X, asteroids, things of that nature there, mainly because I'm trying to be a little bit more cautious about creating anxiety for people. Uh, but I felt that, okay, on this particular information that I am privy to, I wanted to go ahead and put a little bit of this out here for our regular viewing channel just for your knowledge. Uh, keep in mind, we're talking about probabilities, uh, not 100% guaranteed Planet X type of information, but it's concerning enough for me that I wanted to share it with you. Those of you that have watched our broadcast for some time, you know that, uh, and, and maybe it's over on our Patreon channel is where you know this the most, which in the description below will be the link to our Patreon channel where I've spoke about a lot of this information. I told you that the our U.S. government is tracking three systems. I mentioned to you how that the Vatican, uh, the Vatican, they are the gatekeepers. Uh, let me just pull up the Lucifer telescope. Um, this is the Vatican's own telescope that they actually... Uh, have designed, it was designed specifically uh, for the purpose of being able to track Planet X uh, or uh, the infamous Nibiru, whatever you want to call it. That's what they use to be able to follow this system. Uh, the U.S. government, uh, they consider the Vatican the gatekeepers of this knowledge. They said they know it better than anyone. So we have, when I say we, that's the U.S. government and the Secret Space Force, and I actually get to be a part of some, of, just a little tiny little piece of that group there, uh, where I get to throw in my little pennies worth of information on ancient documents about what happened with Planet X when it passed uh, in, in biblical times, uh, what were the effects that it have. Um, so it's kind of, it's been, it's been a pleasure for me to be able to, to be a contributor of that part. And I think that's one of the reasons why I get to learn a little bit more about this. But at any rate, we are, you know, I was told we were looking at three systems. Um, one would be passing this year, an asteroid that would be coming by this year uh, near the Earth. Another one in, uh, they always say 20, 2025, 2026, and 2029 and 2030 mainly on those latter two because they're dealing with uh, December, January time frames right near the end of the year. Uh, so they're not really sure 100% what the actual true time would be of the passing of these uh, asteroids, etc. However, those people that I know tend to lean towards the 2930 time frame as being the real Planet X. But uh, whether you speak to Gil Broussard, Marshall Masters, uh, both men, very brilliant. Uh, also, uh, Mike from around the world. Uh, and Mike, I, th I know that Mike is more on the terrestrial side of the space type of exploration with the government. Uh, but he's also involved in a lot of the information in the briefings that I get as well. So... A lot of what he says I'm already privy to as well. And he's been bringing up here lately about, uh, on his own channel, about an object appearing in the sky that'll be like, uh, I think he said, two moons that you'll see, etc. Uh, and, but I was in meetings Friday and uh, this morning as well. And on Friday, we were discussing, uh, I, actually, I actually brought this up because of some of the things that Mike was saying uh, on Begley's program as well as on his own program, 
where he's talking about these meteorite showers that would be happening uh, the end of May going into June um, and how that he spoke about there you know be more than a thousand an hour so I began to do some research find out you know all right what's going on here well then I was reminded about the asteroid that's coming through that uh, they had already told me about and I've shared with you guys as well and but I know that they've always downplayed this particular asteroid with me. No one has ever made any, any big to-do out of it. But as I went through all the notes that I'd made about what Mike had said, uh, you know, one thing after another was confirmed, with the exception of the 1,000-plus meteorites per hour. Uh, I was told, though, that we didn't know the number. The numbers have not been discussed in our circles as far as meteorites, but nothing really to worry about that the majority of those would be landing in the oceans anyway, so it's not going to really be like affecting us on land that much. And that uh, the, the other thing that, that was shared with me is that, um, yes, there would be like bursts and things. You might get some that would cause uh, like what they had over Russia, might get some things like that. But then they talked about breaking out the antimatter weapon and possibly using that when this asteroid's coming through. Not so much on the asteroid itself, but on a smaller object just to see what we could do. Now, I shared that with you guys, I believe, already on our broadcast here. How nuts is that? Antimatter weapon that's like a hundred times the strength of a nuclear weapon. You know, talk about needing an EMP shield. You know, that's one of the first things I said. That would that create an EMP uh, strike on the Earth? They said we don't even know for sure what it would cause, but most definitely so. So I'm thinking, okay, make sure we put EMP shield INL50 in the box below for you guys, right? Well. But what really struck me, though, and I didn't say anything to you guys about this at all when I reported this the other day, was when I asked, what's the size of the asteroid? I was told three quarters the size of Earth. I walked away from the meeting blown away. I'm like, there's no such thing as an asteroid three quarters the size of the Earth. And the entire weekend, I sat there and I mulled over this and I could not help but wonder, maybe Gilbert Sard's onto something. I want to play a little clip here where he's on uh, this broadcast here. Not sure of the name of the channel. Uh... This was done a month ago. Listen to this here. Which would be around September, slightly before that, maybe after that, when not we see Planet X. Uh, this is, uh, I call it, you know, at the beginning of my research, I called it a planet because we didn't have enough data, but right now I can tell you that it's a planet-sized comet is what it actually is. NASA may give it a whole new category and call it something else, but it's still going to be a, a giant size plant, uh, comet. Right. This wreaks havoc on Earth. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us the next time this planet passes that it's the worst time in all of Earth's history. And uh, there's few words that I can say to qualify that. In other words, Noah's flood was not the worst. Imagine what Gil just said here. And, and I've talked to Gil privately on several occasions already. Um, a planet size comet or asteroid, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm told it's three quarters size of Earth. You know, I was, I was actually speaking with um, uh, Sean. I, I won't call Sean's last name. Sean, former uh, Marine captain in the Marine Corps, who was able to con 
confirm much of the information that I have shared with you about all kinds of space things that I'm aware of. Sean also spoke about the coming Nibiru, as he called it, Death Star, uh, that he was aware of from, milita from, from the military side of things. And that it is a reptilian base and that the queen is going to stop by Earth to see how things are going on the on her way to her oasis. <laughs> I know that Sean was part of a program, or was going to be a part of a program of ga gaining uh, intel from China, from ancient documents. Um, there was an admiral that was killed as a result, so he was unable to be a part of that mission. But I will tell you this, and I haven't shared this with Sean as of yet, um, the mission did go through. And we did gain the technology as well. So just to kind of share that with you. Uh, but anyway, I w this, was, this has blown me away. And then on our meeting on Monday or this morning, uh, we had a meeting this morning there, and I came back to the subject once again of, as Gil calls it, planet-sized comet. Uh, I didn't spell that right. Sorry about that. You know, that's coming our way. Uh, Mike says we'll see two moons in the sky, or what it look like two moons. Uh, he says, no doubt you'll know when it's coming through this this asteroid or comet, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then I asked too. I said, is this even made public, or is it publicly known about this asteroid? I was told no. It's not being made public, uh, but it's coming. And again, the people that I know do not believe this is Planet X, although they do agree with Mike that there are some other bodies in behind it, but they're not really sure what they are. You know, and, and the funny thing is, is we have our own secret space program. We have 20 uh, TRBs. Four of those are in full-time operation. The other 16, we play with them, take them apart, put them back together again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, one of those uses the black goo technology. I'll go into that with you guys over on Patreon on how these things work. I'll break all that down for you. Part of that disclosure project that I'm doing there. But I know we go out, we check these things out. Uh, in fact, if anything, we're worried about viruses being on some of the meteorites that are going to hit the earth there. Uh, but then today, not only was the confirmation given of the size of this thing, but it was also said to me, we're mostly concerned about a pole shift. That the asteroid could actually cause the Earth to flip. That brings me back to Gil Broussard. The one guy with something else, but it's still that going side point. so many people probably take for granted is Gil. And Gil doesn't know this, but one of the people that I know personally in Washington reached out to him, spoke with him directly, warned him not to live in Louisiana. Now, Gil should know that anyway, just from his own knowledge. But I wanted to share this with you. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I can't say to you, I don't really know what's going to happen. Supposedly, this is going to pass the Earth about the third week of June. Uh, in fact, uh, it was funny, the guy that I know up in Washington was, he said to the guys that he works with, he's like, 
wait a minute you guys told me i had till september to get everything ready he's got a bunker he's working on so he's like look i don't got enough time to get all this stuff finished um but i i just i don't know what to tell you i really don't uh this is this is pretty wild and uh you know we'll see as it gets closer we'll see what's going on but supposedly we're going to be able to see this thing pretty soon I uh, don't know exactly how soon it is that we're going to see it, but supposedly pretty soon. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated the best I can. Again, I don't want to cause panic, concern, nothing like or, or panic or anything like that. Uh, but just be vigilant. Pray. Seek the Lord Jesus with all your heart. Uh, we're living in a very odd time, to say the very least. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, and, of course, on the screen, you can see if you want to help contribute to this broadcast, you're welcome to do so. Uh, our mailing address, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. And also, because I mentioned to you the EMP shield, you know, because our government talking about using an antimatter weapon, I don't know if that creates an EMP thing on the earth or not but just always remember there are the, there is the mp shield for everything you can think of even your generator you can get an mp shield but if you choose to buy one uh not only will they bless our ministry by you doing that uh but they will also take off an additional 50 dollars if you use the coupon code inl50 you apply that coupon code it drops your price automatically and it doesn't matter how many devices you buy uh, they'll always take off an additional $50 every time ap apply the code. Uh, so you save 50 bucks off of each item you decide that you might need for your own family's purpose there. Uh, I kind of like the way John Moore says too, you know, if you have grandkids or, or if you have children and you want to help them get something for like their car or something like that, uh, get them a gift and get them an EMP shield. Uh, putting it on the car is very easy. I got a video on there on how to do that myself where I did it for my own car. Uh, I did get one for the house. I just have not installed it on the house and I really need to get it installed on the house. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good evening.